Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of Van Life Living in New York. I'm out here today on a trail that I hadn't been on in a while, and evidently a storm came through, and there's this big old log sitting right here next to me that used to be way down in that creek, and somehow it got pushed up here. That's what happens in storms, right? I was talking about the storm coming this morning when I was giving you that video from the bathroom this morning. <laughs> And, uh, well, you know, those are very hard videos for me to give to you, friend, because I recognize that people don't want to hear that stuff. And, well, people don't want to admit that we've got problems in this nation. And so I'm out in the woods, as always, enjoying what could be my last day of freedom. You just never know. Because I talk about all these truths that people don't want to hear about. You just never know. I always figure I kind of am heading for jails, institutions, and death, right? I don't see a whole lot of good future for me unless my father des decides otherwise, right? I mean, I'm not in control of my own life any more than anybody else is in control of theirs. We all want to believe we're in control, but we're not. <laughs> God is in control. And what he showed me is that the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience. And when we make that choice, it's a worthy choice. And, you know, I come on here, I love to talk about Jesus. And, and now I have the kingdom back. But this morning, friend, after not only did I have to do that video this morning, then I had to put it on a few platforms. And, well, you know, that always makes me kind of nervous when I do these things. I never know whether I go, to go home after this walk whether there'll be there people there waiting for me. You just never know these things. But, you know, Jesus gave us this great truth. And this truth has put me in relationship with my Father. You know, the one we call God. Jesus said, call no man Father, but your Father in heaven. So he's my Father, right? And the purpose of the world is to come to know love by experience. Because in the beginning, my Father was, right? he is he said I am and there's just no truer statement than that he just is and because he is well he didn't want to spend eternity alone so he created a son created creation through him and here we are I'm not going to go into that great detail today I've done it in other videos for you friend and nobody will believe half the stuff I say anyway it doesn't matter what I really want you to do is get a red letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read and believe that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is going to come to you. And even though what he said is true, even greater truths will you be given. Because there's all kinds of great truths there, friend, hidden in his words. But it's not just in his words. you got to look at what he did, what he said. And you got to, you know, all these Pharisees are teaching you that this is what he said and meant. And they don't know anything, friend. You get in contact with the Father and he'll... Just the other day, I, I made it a few quotes, and they're like, oh, you're putting a bunch of Jesus' stuff together. Well, what do you think the Spirit of Truth was supposed to do, friend? <laughs> put it together for you, right? So I put together parables, and I put together statements, and I'll link them all together, and then people say they don't belong together because they're not trusting God to reveal a higher truth to them. The truth I've got is the one I want, right? I mean, I enjoy this, and... I've been out here talking to my father all afternoon for well, not that long, maybe an hour and a, hour and a half, something like that. But friend, I need peace in my life, and sometimes I've got to say challenging things that make me a little nervous. And look, I try to spend most of my time with God. But isn't that what Jesus not only said but did? Right? It said that Jesus got up and sought the kingdom first every day, right? And then he often went into lonely places. So if I'm going to do somewhat of what he did, where I'm going to speak against the Pharisees and speak truth with a whole tongue, well, that's like a sword, right? My tongue becomes like a sword, and people don't like it when they feel the edge of your tongue. So one edge is love, and the other one's truth. The truth of love and the love of truth, right? That's what i got to do. That's what my father told me. He told me I wasn't allowed to do this shortcut stuff that these Pharisees are doing i got to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, a lot of the truth I give you, you won't believe, but you can believe the things Jesus said, right? <laughs> and if not, then you don't believe he's the truth and the life, and therefore he's not your king. You call him a liar, and you're not entering his kingdom. I mean, it's that simple. You can let these Pharisees lie to you all they want, but 
and all you want. But I understand, friend, change is hard. When you've been fed some lie your entire life, it is hard to change your mind. And it's scary. It's scary to think of those things. And, and I was actually thinking about that when I was sitting here before I turned the video camera on. I was thinking to myself, with all these changes that are happening, I failed at a lot of things and I just never gave up. And I've gone through a lot of changes in my life. And I can only imagine people that successfully had a consistent life for years, how they're going to feel as all these changes start to happen, right? So, friend, I'm telling you that, that Jesus will give you the faith you need in order to overcome what's coming. But you really need to get to know him. You need to really read what he said. Believe that the Holy Spirit's going to come to you and, and t spend time. Jesus did say that a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. And the other one I'm always telling you is, he said, Call no man teacher. I'm your teacher. So you really need to go get in relationship with him through the Holy Spirit by reading the things he said. Because in those parables are the truth. The truth is hidden in the parables. He literally told you, friend, I'm going to speak in parables so that they don't understand lest they turn and be forgiven. Now, of course, if you listen to another Bible, it'll put it just a little bit different. But it doesn't matter. That's the basic statement that he made. And I was mad as a hornet when I kind of comprehended what he was saying. I was like, why, do you want, why don't you want us forgiven? What's up with all this insanity? Why do you want this to go on? Well, he doesn't want it to go on, but it has to. And that is because this is how you come to know love by experience. So some of you, while you're out there being selfish and hurting people, are feeling really guilty and terrible. And then others of you are out there loving your neighbor as yourself, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and in prison. And though your life might not be going perfect... You're really enjoying the kingdom you've got because you're in relationship with God. You don't have to hide your thoughts from him, right? So because you're what people would call righteous. I kind of hate that word because the only person that's righteous is God, right? <laughs> so I'm always telling you of myself, I am nothing. It is the Father who doeth my works. Not even the words I speak are on my behalf, but on behalf of the Father who sent me. And then people think I'm being all arrogant about that, and that's not the truth. The truth is... That I'm just a thought my father had about a thought he had. And if you can figure that one out, then you'll understand me and you'll understand my father and you'll understand Christ. Because <laughs> the world was made through him, friend. I'm like a thought Christ had about himself, right? So my father had a thought about a son and the son had a thought about himself in creation. I can't explain to you what I know. It won't even make sense. That's one way of saying it. There's a lot of different ways of saying what I'm trying to say. And I wouldn't even believe it until I saw my father in the beginning. And then I understood it all, even though I understood nothing, right? So, it is what it is. But I understand that, that this has to be done. That we have to... I give you more of truth, because that's what I have, which is my love. I love the truth, and the truth is love. And so I give it to you all the time. But quite often, you know, just like that video this morning where I was telling you what the plans are that they have against us is and all that stuff. It's scary stuff, friend. I mean, we have people that are of pure selfishness, which makes them like demons straight out of hell. They think they're more than you. And I know that a lot of people have a hard time comprehending that. But do you see how the middle class is kind of looking down on the drug addicts and homeless folks and being like thinking that they're better than them? Well, that's the way the corporate elite see the middle class and everyone else they think they're better than us right they're kind of like they think they're gods so when they started seeing all the problems they recognized that the solution doesn't include us surviving but i told you about that in my last video today so i'll let you go listen to that one this one i wanted to talk more about jesus because that's my favorite topic and talking about the kingdom is right here right now i want you to find it Friend, I'm saying all these things. I know that I might lose my life. I know I might end up in jails and institutions. It doesn't matter. I have to speak the truth because the truth is worth having. If you want the kingdom, it's right here, right now. All you have to do is choose it. But it means letting go of selfishness and choosing love. It means loving your neighbor as yourself. It means when 
other people are in need of things, then you give it to them. Like he said about this item when I found interesting, I think it was Brandon Robbins gave me this. He's a great guy to listen to if you want to understand some translations of what it was like back in the day, the Hebrews, when Jesus made these statements. There's different people out there, friend. I put a thing on my Clues to the Kingdom for you to find all kind of videos from all kind of people. And I'm not saying any one of them have the truth, friend. The truth I have isn't the truth they have. But my father gives it all to us in parts, right? So we all get a part of the truth. Like, I know certain things. and But I, I understand one thing that most people don't, and that's the purpose of the world and why it is he does it. Because when I was with my father in the beginning, I understand it all now even though I understand nothing. And just this morning, well, this afternoon, because I was struggling with my faith, friend, because, you know, saying these things that I've been saying. And he reminded me of that experience of being with him in the beginning. And I was like, well, I can't even prove it. And then he reminded me. When I came back from that experience, I yelled something very strange, which I would not have yelled because it was so terrifying that it really took I couldn't even breathe when I came back friend it was what I saw was just beyond explanation but I yelled why hath thou forsaken me and I mean I yelled it like that like Jesus did on the cross why hath thou forsaken me and I did it in a scream because I was in agony of what what I'd understood the the overwhelmingness to my brain to what i saw and understood was way beyond my comprehension and it was the most terrifying thing and i can't even put it into words it won't even make sense but it was the greatest gift my father ever gave me because i've hated this world friend even though i loved it i loved it because i was selfish and i was selfishly looking for things but i've hated the price of the selfishness that we're all causing right i mean we're all at fault for this and it's just not one of us it's all of us and there are those that aren't at fault for it they're the ones that are out feeding the hungry clothing the naked and visiting the sick and in prison and do what my father asked and because they did they'll receive the kingdom that they were promised just as jesus said you would so i'm not worried about you either even though we might have some hard times coming here friend i'm confident that those of you however do know this jesus told you do not take your hand off the plow you're going to need to keep your faith by continuing to be in the spirit of love. So don't let your fear try to run you into the darkness to go hide. That's not a good plan. I don't know what my father's doing with me. I see what's coming. He won't even let me prep for it. I was like, well, Lord, shouldn't I be doing something? Because I got no money. I got no job. I've got no preparations. You know, the ark that I had, I had to abandon. It was a truck on wheels, right? I was living in a truck. And he made me abandon that and return here to do what I'm doing. So it's not like my life makes any sense. It doesn't. To other people, it makes no sense. But because I know what's going on, it makes perfect sense to me. I, I've seen the things he's been setting up, and I just, I just don't know how to explain it to you, friend. And most of it, you wouldn't believe a word of it anyway. My family thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> I've tried to warn people and tell them, He's given me specific instructions for specific people, and when he does, I give it to him. But I don't know what he's doing with me, because to tell you the truth, I'm not even sure if I'm going to survive this, because as I told you, I'm the wilderness goat, right? That's the scapegoat of Yom Kippur. So, which means I have to tell you all these things that you don't want to hear, which makes you angry and, and want to kill me sometimes, some of you all, I'm sure. Just the other day on videos, I had some people really tearing me up friend but that's okay this is the way I look at it friend I used to be always afraid of death so God let me really look at it for what it is the truth is nobody gets out of here alive and most of us get out either through car accidents war cancer there's just not that many good ways out if you start really looking at it there's just not a lot of pleasant ways to die friend so it's not that I'm trying to scare you with that. I'm just telling you, once if you can accept that, that that's the truth, well, then you can start seeking God and stop worrying about always trying to save your life instead of loving your neighbor as yourself. Because 
a lot of people won't go out and feed the hungry and clothe the naked because they're afraid of them. Well, if you want to save your life, well, then you're going to lose it, just like Jesus said. So you're going to need to overcome your fears. And I'm going to tell you something, friend. If, if you want, I, I loved working with folks. I didn't get to do it for very long because it was right before COVID I started doing that. I was doing trainings in prison for inmates, and it was wonderful. And I loved it. And I got to meet some really cool guys in there. And, you know, they're in there for all kind of different things. And, you know, they're all, they don't mean to be what, what a lot of them are being. And if you treat them with love and respect, they love and respect you for it, friend. It's, they're not animals. They're people. They've been, they're people that have been through hard times and hurt people hurt people. And the problem is that we as a human race won't get this. And so we, instead of give each other forgiveness and try to help each other out of a hole, we judge each other and then leave them in the hole they're in. And then they got to, then they keep digging themselves in deeper, right? But I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, if you looked at anything anyway. Some of you all don't have a clue on what I'm talking about. You've never really stopped to think about anything. Part of the things that my father had me do in the beginning of all this is he had me start looking at everything. And he was and like, why did I want what I wanted? And then when I gave myself an answer, I would ask that question again. Because we give ourselves these lies, right? The, the, the serpent in our tongue, is in our head, is a half-tongue wiggler. So to give us this lie, like, why do I want a Lamborghini? Well, because it's beautiful and it's fast. No, there's more to it than that, friend. There's a whole psychological thing going on why it is you want that, right? And if you just give go with the first lame answer that your, sub, that your consciousness gives to you, you'll never really understand yourself, much less anybody else. So I had to really kind of really tear my own psyche psyche apart but I did it with the Holy Spirit I couldn't have done it on my own because I was always ashamed and felt guilty for everything I've done and he taught me how to look at things with him and recognize that I was doing all these things and I didn't even know why I was doing it and I'm not recommending you do that if God calls you to it then you do it but if you want to be in the image and likeness of God, then you want to be in the image and likeness of Christ. And it's time to become a student that is not greater than his teacher. And he was the least among us. So if you can let go of this idea of the possessions you have, what's coming is going to be a lot easier. Because if you can't see where this is all going, you're just not looking. So those that are possessed by their possessions are going to find themselves in a really hard place and terrified and in because you put everything ahead of God, you're going to know that you're in trouble. So now's a good time to start meditating. Start putting God first. Start seeking the kingdom first. Wake up every morning and give God some time and read some Jesus and try to understand his parables. And I mean, I've been breaking them down for you, friend, but a lot of you won't believe what I believe because... You all have been like warped in your minds by the church of, of how God's angry and the wrath of God. It's not God's anger. My father knew the end in the beginning. He'd have to be angry at himself for doing it. That doesn't make sense. It never did. However, there is, well, the truth is it's Christ you got to fear because he's the one that you called the greatest love. But just as he loved you, now he's got to judge you because he said he would. And that's the price of doing what he did. He did something wonderful, but there's a price for it. And though he loves you, he has to judge you. It's just the nature of it. So don't take it personal if you're a Christian and you end up going through great hell. He told you to forgive. And if you didn't forgive that when you went back before him, that you were going to be cast into prison and pay all that's due. Due, right? So if you are owing debt, because you won't forgive others their debt, well, then you're getting cast into prison, friend. It's nothing personal here. Jesus told you the truth. So, and they told you that that wasn't true. And it is true that he'll forgive all debt, but you've got to repent. Repent means admit you're wrong and change your mind. And then I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness for thoughts before they ever become words out of my mouth or actions, right? I've learned real fast, and my father's taught me how to do this. 
I didn't teach myself. My father taught me this. I don't know how to explain this to you because nobody will believe it. He started showing me how to do this. He showed me the truth about himself, that he is the greatest thought ever and that he abides in me. And if I will follow him, he will guide me. And he taught me how to start putting my thoughts before him. And then every time, because I was still feeling guilty for things even before baptism, friend, even before I was supposedly born again and all this stuff, right? And this thought of Satan was always condemning me for everything. And I still didn't believe in Jesus the way I needed to to really feel forgiven. So I, even though they, I was saying I was forgiven, I didn't feel it because I wasn't giving anyone else forgiveness. So this was a path that was hard for me to find, and it took me some time. I'm not lying. That's why I keep telling everybody, now's a good time to get started, right? Because sooner or later, the door to the wedding's going to close. And that, what that kind of means in my understanding, he doesn't give it to me exactly. But there's going to come a time where the fear is going to be so great and the world's going to go dark. And how you're going to be the light in the dark if you can't even be the light in the light, I have no idea. I mean, you know, the Bible says that some, it might happen. I don't know. I, I'm not here to tell you. My father gives me what I need. He gives me what I need to give to you. That's pretty much it. I mean, I know who he is because I was with him in the beginning, and I know why he creates it, because he is. And because he is, I am. And because I am, he is. Yet you are because he is, and he is because you are. Here's the thing, friend. My father doesn't need anything, but he needs everything, or else he wouldn't create and allow this all to go wrong. Christianity kind of... It's like, oh, God doesn't need anything. Would you all wake up? If God didn't need anything, do you think he'd just allow this suffering to go on? This is a free will choice that we make. Each of us choose wrongly, and then we cause others to help down the path of choosing wrongly. If all the Christians were out doing the things Christ asked, the light would be spreading instead of the darkness. But they don't because they think they're getting a free kingdom in their death. So your Pharisees did this to you. They dug a hole and threw you in it, and now you're in it with me on this planet called Earth where we're murdering each other and pretending that there's not a price to all this. And Jesus told you that was a lie. He, he was... My father's a farmer, and he's farming a crop called love. And if you're not going to be in the spirit of love, then you don't carry a white stone, and you don't know your names on it. Jesus laid this all out for you, and Brandon Robbins will give you some of this too. Like I said, I've met now it's the second time I've mentioned his name. You need to really start looking up for some people, and and get this going on, and decide whether you're going to seek the world or the kingdom, because the one you seek is going to be the one you find, and at the end. The choice you made is going to be the one you have. And I'm just not lying to you about any of this, friend. I'm telling you the truth. Because Jesus told you this. This is what Jesus said, right? All the things that I keep telling you, sometimes they're in context of parables and sometimes they're not. But they're all things Jesus said if you go look. And everybody says, that well, I put things together and that isn't true either. And Friend, I don't care what you all believe. You know what I mean? If you don't want to believe the truth, well, then you don't have to. You could instead believe that God is this evil being and that he's doing all this intentionally. He's not. He told you he gave you ten commandments and they went in the ark, right? They were unbreakable. Christ died to give you forgiveness for breaking the ten commandments. However, if you're going to continue to break the ten commandments, you're not going to hang all the laws and the prophets and only two commandments, then you're still guilty and... It's not that you're not going to do things wrong, but if you're just intentionally doing it and you know better and you chose not to because you you hid your thoughts from God and you pretended that you were going to get a free kingdom in your death, that's not God's fault. It's not my fault. It's not Jesus' fault. It's your fault for deciding that was what you were going to choose. So in the end, you will be cast into prison and you will pay all that's due. That's just a fact. Go read Jesus and see if the things I'm saying isn't what he said. He said it all in parables. So that you wouldn't turn and be forgiven unless you decided to put him ahead of the world. It's all there. But people weren't looking because they love listening to these Pharisees that want you to glorify them. Jesus never said that. The early church didn't look anything like this. 
right? You know the Catholic Church, because Constantine wanted to take power, you know, it, Christianity was ruining his religion because Christians were dying so bravely that, well, everybody was converting. So once he took over, then they went to killing. Well, people stopped re converting unless they got, you know, their life taken. And, you know, at the threat of death, they would become Christian. And then you teach your children that and, you know, you breed it into them in a few generations. Everybody's just thinking the same way as those early Catholics did. Now it's taken us years to try to get away from that thought system. And some people are still stuck in it. Go get a red letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read and do the things he asked. He told you to give your gifts in secret. There's a reason for that, friend. That's how it is that you end up overcoming this thought of Satan because it's pride it's selfishness it's suffering and if you do the things that Jesus asked you'll find you'll find out why and my father will show it to you I didn't even know what I was doing when I was doing a friend I was I he kind of showed it to me as I went some things I kind of figured out I started seeing what was going on and then at the end he kind of revealed everything to me and went look Jason see you went and gave these gifts in secret. Do you see what happened? And kind of walked me through the process of how it was that it changed me psychologically. And when this thought of Satan comes to me now, this thought of selfishness and guilt and all that, it doesn't have the power over me that it used to because I don't feel guilty because I'm doing what my father asks of me. And the couple things that I'm doing that you'd say that he doesn't ask of me, that's between me and him, right? My relationship with my father is between me and him. It's not between me and you. You can't tell me whether I'm going to enter the kingdom or not. You can't tell me if I got a white stone or not. Jesus' words say I do. You know, because the big thing you'll condemn me for is smoking. And Jesus said it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth. So if you're hung up on that and you want to judge me, you're welcome to, friend. It doesn't matter to me because it just doesn't. I'm doing what it is my father asks of me, and I'm speaking a truth that you don't want to hear because these corporations are trying to get rid of the thought of God, and I will let them crucify me before I let them take away the thought of God, which is my father. And if you haven't figured this out, his children have, have to make a free will choice. I've made a free will choice to make a stand for my father, just like Christ did. So you can say whatever you want. But I, I can't back out because I made my father a commitment. There was a price to all the things that I learned. I gave him a death in exchange for the truth. Now, now he actually asked me to give it to him early, and I was willing, and I did. But it wasn't death. It, it's a long story, and I ain't going to go into it. But So I don't really know whether I have to give him another death or not. That's the truth. But it really doesn't even matter. Because my father was in the beginning, and he'll be in the end, and because he is, I am, and I'll always be as long as I'm being for him. Because a thought that loves the father more than the world, my father's not getting rid of that, right? If I'm willing to put myself on the altar for my father, do you think he's going to want to get rid of the thought of me? Am I giving him a headache? No. <laughs> I'm the thought of himself that loves him. With his whole heart, mind, and soul, friend. I don't know how to explain this to you. The things that I say won't make sense to you. You'll think I'm a lunatic. Until you see God in the beginning, which is to be with him, I can't really say see him because he's got no form. You won't understand. But I can tell you, once you have that experience and, you, and he reveals it to you, you will go to your cross. Not because you want to, but because he's worth it. He does this for a good reason. And if any one of us were in the position he was in, we'd do it too. Except he's so amazing, we couldn't do it, right? I mean, look at this world, friend. It's just absolutely awesome. And he was at the end and the beginning at the same time. He knew the end and the beginning. All this prophecy's been written. I mean, you know, the... You know, you've got the Euphrates River drying up. All these prophecies are coming true, and people are still sleeping like nothing. I just can't believe that they're still sleeping, and they call themselves Christian. I just don't know what they're thinking. 
But what do I know? You know, they, they're not willing to look at their thoughts like I was and to turn their thoughts over to God. But it's the most joyful thing ever. And because of that, even though I say hard things and I see that sometimes I'm walking a kind of a perilous path, well, I have joy most of the time because I keep giving my thoughts to God and he keeps giving me love, joy, and peace and reminds me that I'm doing this for him and that I've got nothing to be afraid of, that I've got eternal life. I'm carrying a white stone, friend. Nobody knows it but myself. You would not believe you ought to have heard the things a Christian was saying to me the other day. Oh, they were calling me liars and all that stuff because I talked about this eclipse being a warning. And they said I was a devil and all this stuff. But that's okay, friend, because I'll forgive them for they know not what they do. They're doing the best they can with what they got. They're scared to death and they're afraid to look at anything because they, they know in their hearts they don't have a white stone because if they did, they'd just forgive me and go on about their way. But they don't, and so... They're really, I scared them with the truth, just like I might scare you with the truth. I'm not trying to, friend, but somebody has to warn you what's coming because nobody wants to. So that's the reason my father needed two scapegoats in the history, right? One for the first fruit, one for the second fruit. You declared yourself a Christian nation, one nation under God. He's giving you an opportunity to repent. If you don't make that choice, you pay your due. I'm not lying to you. You should be able to figure this out. I mean, look at what he did to Israel in the Old Testament every time they looked like us. Come on, friend. If you're a Christian, I sure hope you're thinking about that. I hope if you're one of those Old Testament listeners that you've been listening to that and understanding. I'm just not lying to you here, friend. You can't do this in the name of God. I mean, his name's on our money. In God we trust. Our presidents stand up there and pray right before they go to cheating and slaughtering people. And I might be talking about the president, Kurt. If you all knew exactly what he was doing and why he wanted those people running across that border, you'd be appalled. But nobody seems to be able to figure it out. And I did mention some of it this morning in that video, but I'm not going into that today, at this video. This one's me talking to you about having the kingdom because this is what I really love to talk about. This is the things that really bring me joy, is telling you how great my Father is and how great Christ is and how they both love you and want you to make the right choice. But if you won't make the right choice, you got to pay your debt. Christ has to judge you. He has to break the seal. He told you that. It's all been written. They said, who is worthy of breaking the seal? They didn't say God. They said the slain lamb, right? You understand that. You get that. The slain lamb breaks the seal, not God. And I know that many of you say that God and Jesus are one, which is true. He's in the Father and the Father's in him. But he's in me and I'm in him. And therefore, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me, right? Every Christian made that statement. Whether you want to admit to it or not, you should really go look at what Jesus said. Because he said, if you invite me into your heart, my Father comes with you. So by stating yourself as a Christian, you have said, I am in the Father, and the Father's in me, and everything you've done, you've done in representation of the Father. If you've been doing some things that, that aren't good, you might want to repent, like right now. <laughs> I'm just not lying to you, friend. I'm telling you the truth. I just hope you're listening, and that you choose the kingdom over the world. There's forgiveness for everybody. I'm telling you there is. My father wants the house full. I'm here to invite you to a wedding. If you've never heard of Jesus and you've been listening to my stuff, you're intrigued, join the wedding, friend. Go get a red-letter edition of the Bible. Read what Jesus said and start doing the things he asked. You'll be like me. Even though I didn't believe he was the son of God necessarily in the beginning, I was convinced when I was done doing what he asked. You will become convinced because you're going to start doing it. My father's going to know your heart. And because you're doing the right thing and you're trying to figure it out, he's going to help you on the journey. And he's going to make it apparent that he's there. Because he has no form. He's everywhere. There's just nowhere he's not. Every thought you ever had, he knew before you had it. My father is so great that I can't even use words to define him to you. He's beyond. He is the awesomeness of awesome. <laughs> He is the genius of all geniuses, 
and beyond that. I just can't even explain it to you. Here, look at creation, friend. It's brilliant. I mean, he's just ridiculous. You're ridiculous, Lord. You're just that great. You know what I mean? That's the way I feel. And, and I understand why he does it. And so it's a wonderful thing if, if you want to choose love over selfishness and, and get forgiveness. But if you want forgiveness, then you got to give it. Remember that. Don't listen to these Pharisees like serpents wiggling half a tongue. Jesus said right in the Lord's Prayer, Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who debt against us. So if you're not going to forgive them your, their debts, you're not forgiving yours, welcome home. Because you're going to end up in a place called hell, which isn't going to be there. It's coming here. Except for the those that go get in their underground arcs then they're going to be in hell down there. And let me tell you, you'll rather be up here than down there. Let me tell you that right now. Because they think they're going to escape, and they just don't have a clue. But anyway, friend, just know that I love you because my father loves you, and I hate saying all the hard things, but the kingdom's here. Seek it now. Give love so that you can receive love. And they give all the credit to the Father, and then he'll give it back to you so that you can give it to them, and then they'll give it to you, and then you can give it back to the Father. And become this flow of the spirit of love, which is what my Father is. <laughs> all right, friend. May God bless you and yours.